in this video, I'm going to talk about the beat control functionality of Zwobot. This allows you to automate certain parameters based on the BPM of your Ableton project. You can see when a parameter can have the beat control applied to it because it'll have this circular little button usually to the left of it. And when you press it, it'll turn white, which means it's on. If you turn it off, it'll go back to gray, which means it's off. So in the Zwobot player, I can see that there are three parameters that can have the beat control applied to them. This fade dial, the zoom controls, and the speed control of the video for both decks. Some examples of what this looks like in the effects modules are here. So I've got this error quake module. You can apply it to this flicker control. You can apply it to this quake control, the shake control. Same thing with this stretch module. Now in this case, it's below the parameters, not to the left of it. So that's something to look out for. It won't always be to the left. And same here with this move module. Now, if I were to turn this flicker control on, for example, we can see it's not doing anything and the dial's not moving at all. The reason for that is because there's a master beat control which is inside your Zwobot player over here. And we can see that this is currently turned to off. So this will always override any of these settings. So because it's off, nothing's happening here. Whereas if I turn it on, you can see now this dial is starting to move. So this will control the rhythm of how often it moves. So currently it's set to quarter notes. So it's going to adjust the parameter every beat. If I turn the metronome on, we'll hear that. So you'll see this dial is moving to a random number every beat. And if I change it to half notes, it's changing every two beats. If I put it to whole notes, it's changing every bar. Now you'll notice there's this highlighted area in white here. That controls what part of the dial is going to be active. So you'll notice when it's changing, it's not going anywhere outside of that highlighted part. So you can control which specific area of the dial you want it to jump to. And you change that just by clicking and dragging. So keeping hold of the mouse and dragging it around. So if I only want this to be moving in the upper half of the dial, I can just highlight that part. And now you can see it's only going to move in that section. And if I want it to be the lower half, I can do that. So now the effect is much more subtle. Some controls work a bit differently. So for example, this quake and shake control, they don't have a dial. They just basically go on or off. So you can see this quake effect is being applied every beat. Same thing with the shake effect. With these types of effects, again, there's no dial, so it's just gonna jump to another one. I'll have to turn this up so we can see it. It's just gonna jump to another setting, in this case, every beat. And it's random. If you wanted it to be specific, so you wanted it, for example, to jump to this, and then this, and then this, you would have to manually automate that using clip automation. Now, there are some modules that have their own beat controls built into them, such as this move module. We can see it's got a BPM dial here. So I'm gonna turn my master beat control off. And we'll notice that this works even with the master beat control off because it's got its own built-in beat control. And in this case, I can adjust it from 16th notes to whole notes or off. And it's the same with this control within this module. This doesn't respond to 
the master V control. So even if I turn that up, you'll see it's not changing. It'll only change in accordance with this. And now we can see it's changing. So that's just something to bear in mind. If you see that a module has its own BPM control like this, then the parameters within that module are gonna to respond to this, not to your master beat control. If you want to manually adjust your beat control and you don't want it to be synced to the BPM of your project, you can do that using this manual beat bang button on the player. So if I were to turn some of these beat controls on. Now I've got my master beat control off, so nothing is happening, but what I can do is click this button, and what that's gonna do is, every time I click it, it's going to change any of those beat control dials. So if I click it again, we can see they've changed again. So if you want a bit more manual control over this, you can do it this way and this will apply to anything that's got the beat control on. So now we can see these controls are changing as well whenever I click this. And of course you could map this to a controller so that every time you press that button on your controller it changes the settings of all of those parameters.